Hey everybody, Will Hamilton here, and in this video I'm going to preview the Rafael Nadal, Robin Soderling French Open Final. Now, this final absent of a Federal Rafa final is probably the one that everybody was hoping for. Robin Soderling, of course, beat Rafa last year at the French Open, so this is the rematch. Of course, the stakes are now elevated. This is the men's final, and let's start by talking about the weather conditions tomorrow because it's supposed to rain and it's supposed to be a little bit cooler than it was the past couple days. And this is going to be a big advantage for Soderling because against Federer, one of the reasons Soderling had success, success against Fed was because it was raining, the court, and the rain slowed the court down, and that gave Soderling a lot of time to set up for his ground strokes, take huge cuts at the ball. Now against Burditch, it was warmer, and the ball moved through the court faster, and Soderling said in the press conference he was struggling because Burditch hits real flat, and with the conditions, he really didn't have time to get set. He didn't have as much time as he liked to play his style of game. Now, against Rafa, of course, if the court is slowed down with the rain, then that's going to help him set up and take big cuts. And also, Rafa doesn't hit the ball as flat as Soderling, so the combination of Rafa's more heavily spun ball and the slower courts is really going to give Soderling a big advantage. If it, if it was 80 degrees and the courts were real dry, that would play significantly into Rafa's favor. So I think the conditions are going to be a big, uh, a big help for Soderling. Now with that in mind, let's talk about the strategy I expect to see tomorrow. And what you'll probably end up with, we'll put Rafa down here and Soderling the S up there. Rafa's going to look to keep a lot of balls to Soderling's backhand. Soderling can certainly rip his backhand, but it's not quite as powerful as Soderling's forehand. And Rafa, of course, one of his staples is to pull the ball cross court and get his opponent off the court. This, of course, is a lefty's forehand over here. So if Rafa hits the ball a little bit short but angles it well, that's perfectly fine. A short angled ball is a good shot, again, because you get your opponent off the court, leave the rest of the court open. So look for Rafa to try and execute this strategy, get Soderling moving, because Soderling, when he's not set up, he can't punish the ball nearly as much as if he's really set up, has time to take his big strokes and crack the ball. Now, what I think Soderling might try and do, and an effective strategy to combat this, well, let's take a step back. Let's say that you're in a cross-court rally like this, and your opponent hits a nice angled ball. Typically, you would say to yourself, well, I want to hit a good cross-court ball as well. I want to keep the ball, you know, in this cross-court rally. Well, with Rafa, because he's so good at pulling the ball cross-court and pulling you off the court, this plays into his hands a little bit. If Soderling comes back cross-court, then Rafa can just keep the ball cross-court as well and push Soderling further and further off the court and wait for an opportunity to hit to the open court. This is something Rafa's done really well against Federer in the past. Well, Soderling, he's about 6'4". He obviously is extremely strong, can hit the ball real high, can handle the high, uh, the high top spin off of Rafa's forehand. So Soderling might instead hit more towards the middle of the court, somewhere in this area, and hit what is called a big shot at a big target. You have a big target in the middle of the court, and you hit real hard, so you have a lot of margin for error. And by keeping the ball in the middle of the court, and again, this has to be a well-hit, hard ball, Rafa is not going to have this angle. He won't be able to pull Serling as, as far off the court, and instead he might only be able to hit a shot somewhere like this, so not quite as much angle on the ball. And by doing that, by keeping the ball in the middle of the court more, Soderling won't be pulled as far off the court. He'll have better lateral court positioning. Now, if Soderling is able to crack the ball down the middle of the court, particularly to Rafa's forehand, Rafa sometimes struggles with that shot. Against Del Potro in the U.S. Open, uh, US Open semifinal last year, which Del Po won 2-2-2, two, two, and two, he, Delpo was blasting the ball at Rafa, some of them to the forehand. Rafa was struggling to handle that ball. And what happens is instead of getting a nice, well-angled ball that might land a little short, but again, that short ball, it allows you to pull your opponent further off the court than if you hit it a little bit deeper. Well, you take this, but then you move it over here into the middle of the court. Now those, instead of being a nice, well-angled ball that pulls your opponent off the court, this becomes a sitter for Soderling, 
on his forehand. So by hitting the backhand hard down the middle of the court and trying to pressure Rafa's technique, Soderling will have a decent chance of getting a lot of balls in the middle of the court that he can now control with his forehand. And then, of course, he's going to be in the driver's seat in this situation. And particularly if you have those slower, you know, the slower conditions tomorrow, a wet court, well, then he's going to be able to step in and really have time to set up and take huge cuts. So this is what I think we'll see. Rafa trying to keep Soderling off the court to his backhand. Maybe Soderling comes down the middle, big shot, big target to try and establish, you know, to try and get Rafa to hit short more in the middle so that Ra so that Soderling can now be in, be in control of the point off his forehand side. A couple other points I want to touch on. Soderling obviously needs to serve big and serve a high percentage, around 65% or higher, so that he is in control of most of the points on his, uh, on his service game. So the, the serve needs to be there and the, uh, the return. Off Rafa's second serve, Soderling should really be trying to pressure, uh, pressure Rafa off that first ball. It's something Soderling, Soderling did extremely well against Federer, so I expect to see more of the same from, uh, from Soderling in that department. Now, who do I think is going to win this match? Well, I think, uh, I think this is going to be an epic match. I'm going to say five sets. I picked Rafa before the tournament. I'm going to stick with Rafa. I think he's just got a little too much um, for, uh, for Soderling to, uh, to deal with. I do think Soderling has a chance to win this match. I would not be surprised if Soderling wins it, but I think Rafa, the combination of his excellent clay court game, he's been playing more aggressively. He's really been moving forward and flattening his ground strokes out a little bit when he has an opportunity, and I think that's going to be an effective play against Soderling. He's not going to just try and play, you know, grind him down and play maybe a more traditional clay court game. And I also think that Rafa's concentration is better than Soderling. And Soderling has had a couple lapses in concentration, particularly against Burditch, where for a set, essentially, he just kind of went away and wasn't playing particularly well. And if that happens against Rafa, you know, Rafa is going to make him pay for that in a way that someone like Burditch wasn't quite able to. So I think Rafa is going to win this again. I think it's going to be a great match, a very, you know, contrasting styles. So I think it's going to be really interesting tactically, and I'm looking forward to it. And like we've been talking about over the course of the French Open, tomorrow is our live webcast during, during the men's final. So if you're watching the final on your television, tune into our website, fuzzyyellowballs.com, and we, have a, we will have a live webcast going, a chat box there so you can interact with us, and we'll be commentating along with the match like you would expect from the TV commentators. So it's a lot of fun. I think we provide somewhat of a different look from what's going on on television. We, of course, have the dry erase board so I can diagram the uh, you know, particular plays that were interesting or, or pivotal situations. So if you are available, if you are watching the final, please tune in. A lot of fun. We'll be giving away some, some free stuff, including a tennis racket. So you could win a new, uh, you know, maybe a new uh, Rafael Nadal tennis racket or Robin Soderling tennis racket, whichever one uh, you prefer. But it'll be a lot of fun, so we will see you uh, hopefully tomorrow during the match. Did you know that there are only five simple things you need to do to have a textbook forehand like Roger Federer? If you click the link in the description of this video and visit our website, you'll learn why Federer's forehand is so good and how you can copy his technique. And this entire 45-minute lesson is 100% free. Join the thousands who have already learned what these five simple things are and take control of your forehand today.